everyone. My name is Jadid and I'm the dietitian at the Davenport Perth Neighborhood and Community Health Center. In this video, I would like to show you how to roast a turkey. So if you've never done this before, don't worry. I will give you lots of tips and ideas of how you can make sure that the turkey doesn't turn out very dry. So first of all, I will go with you over the ingredients. What you will need is one pound of turkey per person. Um, so if you have, let's say, seven people or eight people, you'll need a seven to eight pound turkey. A quarter pound of butter. Zest of orange. Then you can choose any kind of fresh herbs, like we have over here thyme and sage. Um, and then as well, you will need one bulb of garlic over here. And we have one onion, two clementines. And then to give it more flavor, two bay leaves. You'll need salt and pepper to flavor it. And then depending on what roasting pan you are using, you will might need some um, vegetables as well. So if you don't have a roasting pan with a rack, then uh, you can create the rack effect with using some carrots and some celery. You also need a little bit of uh, olive oil just to make sure that the butter doesn't burn. So over here I have the butter. So that's a quarter pound of butter and it's soft. And what I do now is I have the orange. I use a microplane um, or you can use the usual grater um, to just add zest into the butter. So about a quarter of the whole orange. That will make it nice. And then what we are going to add is the herbs. So I have the thyme. And if you take a sprig of thyme, how to take the leaves off is easy. If you hold it on the top, then all you have to do is just move it down and it will come off easily. And then on the, et on the ends, I will just it. So if you take about four or five sprigs, then that's enough. And we're going to add sage. So you can chop up about three leaves of sage. So you just take the leaves off. One, two, three, and then you chop those up. And then we're going to add some minced garlic. So if you have a garlic press, that's a very quick way of mincing it. If you don't, then take three of the cloves, so this is one clove, and you place it, the flat side down, on the cutting board, and then you take your knife, push it down hard, and that way it will be ma basically mashed, and you can peel it very easily. And then all you have to do is chop it up. So you use a claw with your finger if you have a big knife, and the knife you hold between your thumb and index finger, and you just quickly move it with the tip staying on the cutting board. And then you can turn it around, chop it the other way. You wanna make it very thin, very minced, um, because you want the butter to have the full flavor of the garlic. There we go, so that's one clove. And then I have over here two more cloves. And then we're going to mix that. Okay, so that is ready. That is ready. And then we move on to the next step. So the next step is that we're going to get our turkey and we're going to remove the giblets. Those are the neck, the liver, the kidneys um, from the cavity of the turkey. Um, you can use those later for gravy. So I'm going to get it out of the fridge now. Okay, so there is my turkey. And uh, as you can see, I have to remove the neck. This is the neck and the giblets. It can be that they are on the other side of the bird. So this is the neck of the bird. So there you go. So these I'm going to put aside. So what we will do next is we're going to make sure that the bird is dry. So some of the, some people, they um, rinse the bird in the sink. So I do not recommend that because then you end up with a sink full of bacteria and that way you could contaminate, you know, if you're washing vegetables or if you are putting dishes in there, um, you could contaminate those items. So I 
don't recommend that. So instead, we're going to use some paper towel. Over here. And we're going to pat it dry. So this way, the seasoning is going to stick to the skin. If we don't do that, then it's going to fall off. I'll turn it over and do the other side too. So now what we are going to do is we're going to stuff the turkey um, on the inside and we're going to season it with salt and pepper. Good. So we hold the bird up and then we're going to put salt in the cavity. Very generous, about one, one teaspoon. So put some pepper here. Okay, so now what we will do is we will stuff the turkey. So for that we will need one onion. And we will chop it in half. And we will need two clementines, which we're also going to cut in half. And we will need one bubble of garlic. And we'll chop that. Well. So now we're going to fill the cavity. So as you can see over here. Put it in. So it's very important that you don't stuff the cavity too much um, because then there's not going to be enough uh, space for the air to cook the turkey inside. Okay, good. So if you want, you can also um, truss the legs so that they stay more closely together and the turkey will, turkey will, will cook more um, evenly. And as well, we're going to tuck in the wings so that they're not sticking out. Now that the turkey is stuffed, um, we are going to line the inside of the turkey um, with the bay leaves. So over here we have one leaf. So we're going to put that just on the inside of the skin and on this side too and if you like to put the butter on the inside of the skin um, what you will do is you take a spoon and you go very very gently in between the skin and the flesh okay so very gently because you don't want the skin to rip that way um, all the juices are going to escape, right? So. Great, so I'll show you what it looks like. So you take a little bit of the butter, maybe a, um, an eighth of it, and you push it onto one side of the breast. And then if you hold your hands on it, you can push this fat further until it reaches further down the breast. Okay. And then you do that on the side as well. so that all of the parts will stay juicy. Good, so now that it is on the turkey, um, we are going to season the outside with the butter. So it's easier if you melt the butter. So I'm going to put it in the microwave for maybe 10 seconds and then we will spread it with a brush on top of the breast and the legs. Here we go. So now it is melted and it still has the herbs in it. It has the orange and the garlic. So it's going to be flavorful and we're going to spread it on top. Now what 
we're going to do is we're going to tuck in the wings so that they don't burn because they're kind of sticking out. So we move them inside, we push them against the body. Okay, so the last thing that we still need to do is to drizzle the turkey with olive oil. So we're taking off the lid and all we do is just gently sprinkle a little bit over it. So this way the butter is not going to um, burn inside the oven. Now if you're going to roast your turkey at a later time, if you're keeping it in the fridge seasoned um, for up to four days, um, you can take it out of the fridge on the day that you're going to roast it, um, making sure that you take it out one hour before you start roasting it. This way you can make sure that the meat will be juicy and tender and that the turkey is not going to get shocked going from a cold fridge into a hot oven. Now, if you're concerned about the amount of so butter that's in the roasting pan, um, and then and don't put, put it inside your skin. Have a rack to put on the, the outside. The turkey that way, on. once the uh, turkey is cooked, you can always remove the skin, skin with right? And then you're sure that the, the celery and the carrot is still tender. So alternating and the celery and the carrot sticks. We'll just create a rack for ourselves. So then we're going to put the turkey on top of it. And what we'll do now is we will tuck the wings under. So we move the wings to the front and under. Okay, this way it will stay more together and it will not burn the wings. Good. So our turkey is ready to go into the oven now and you can bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, um, 20 minutes per pound of turkey. So this is a 10 pound turkey. It will need 200 minutes, which is three hours and 20 minutes. The simplest way to check that the turkey is actually cooked is to use a thermometer. So over here I have two different thermometers. Um, so this one is an electric thermometer, digital, and this one is not digital. So this one, um, I just have to press the on button I stick this pin inside the thickest part of the thigh, um, not touching the bone, and then I can read off the temperature. It should be 180 degrees Fahrenheit to be fully cooked. Okay? And then you can take it out of the oven and you will need to let it rest um, for at least 30 minutes, but the longer you let it rest, the tastier, the, the, the tender, more tender the meat is going to be. Uh, because it allows the juices to redistribute. So, and then this thermometer, you do the same thing, but you just push it into the thickest part of the thigh, and then you have to wait until the meter goes all the way up. 